What's going on everyone? It's your boy, Medivac Guy, coming to you again with another video. Um, just some quick housekeeping stuff before I get into the main body of what I'm going to be reading today. Uh, I wanted to let you guys know that I really appreciate all of the thorough feedback that I was given in the comments. Uh, there was a few people that got a little nasty, which is to be expected when you're on the interwebs. Um, but I will say that I really appreciate the positive stuff that you guys gave me to work with. And like my key takeaways from all of your comments was that I need to pre-read my scripts, I need to make notes for pacing, and I need to recite out loud. I'm trying to make the best possible product that I can with my limited knowledge base of what the hell I'm doing. And that knowledge base is pretty much non-existent. So for those of you that said that it sounded like I was nervous, eh, that might partially be true. It might also be true that I don't all, always talk in my natural cadence whenever I'm recording just because I'm not not really having a conversation. I'm trying to figure out how to properly pace myself as somebody that's lecturing and not somebody that's having a conversation. Um, I'm still working on a lot of the audio issues as far as like the limitations of my equipment and uh, a top comment that I saw a lot was get this dude a better microphone. That's more on me than anybody else because my microphone is fine it's me trying to figure out how to soundproof things properly, how to piss with the different settings, essentially to make myself not sound like garbage. So that's another key thing that I've been dealing with. Uh, one final note uh, before I get into the reading, just so that way there's a little bit of reference. Um, I am a commando. I'm from the commando community. That's predominantly been my board for a pretty long time. Uh, I also participate a lot in X threads and KX threads, and that's what I'm going to be reading about today. Um, I used to hunt quite a bit, and then as I got older, I got more into firearms and uh, the outdoorsman bushcraft part of uh, being a commando, you know, grabbing an SKS and going in the woods. Um, and we've all had those nights where we sit at our little campfire and we hear something that doesn't exactly sound like anything that we uh, know or register as uh, normal woodland sounds, but, you know, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Hello, X. I'm visiting from K, and would like to tell you a story in regards to some of my recent adventures. There are no skeletons in closets, dinosaurs walking, or trips to Bel Air. I'm not a writer by any means either, so please forgive me if my writing style isn't the greatest. Whether this story is paranormal, extraterrestrial, interdimensional, or man-made, I'll leave up to you, as I still cannot decide for myself. You see, I like to fancy myself as a survivalist, or a prepper for some of you. I live in Nevada, about an hour outside of Las Vegas. For certain reasons, I'm keeping the exact location secret and purposefully distorting some details. For those of you that don't know, a good 90% of Nevada is government or military owned land. A lot of it is free to roam though. The only areas you really shouldn't venture to are well fenced and clearly marked, for good reasons really. There are many still active radioactive sites as well as government testing facilities, bombing ranges, and other things of that nature. They really aren't that exciting to be quite honest, and usually only have some concrete foundations or target shacks on them, and are probably hazardous to your health or safety at that. The sites that aren't are usually fully manned military bases where they cock about with drones. Now, I've never been one to believe in paranormal phenomenon. At best, I acknowledge our government has several high-tech projects they keep failed, but what I experienced really made me question these beliefs. I digress, however. Also, just a disclaimer, not all of these pictures are mine, because I didn't bring a camera with me. This story started about a month ago, around on a warm spring night. Yes, it starts warming up early out here. When you were all getting snow, it was hitting about 80 degrees Fahrenheit during midday. I had vacation time I had yet to cash in on, and it was nearing the point of expiration. So I took it, not really having any plans or foresight into what I wanted to do with my two weeks off. I did, however, take some of my savings and cashed in on an IR laser for my rifle and a night vision binocular headset. 
The first night of my vacation, I felt somewhat restless, so I started up my Minecraft server and played around for a bit, still feeling unsatisfied. I've always had trouble sitting still, knowing there's nothing to be productive with. My mind goes racing, coming up with hundreds of project ideas. I finally settled on the idea of camping. Unfortunately, most of my friends were busy with the drudgery of work, and no one I knew was willing to get away for the week. It dawned on me that I had never tried camping for a lengthy period of time alone. For good reason, though. The desert is a nasty place to get stranded, and death is a very real possibility should something go terribly wrong. Between dehydration, broken bones, and rattlesnakes, you definitely have to be careful. The only thing I could think to really combat this would be to take along my 5 watt ham radio and research the closest repeaters for different choice areas I have to call for help if things went south, and my Yugo M76, just in case. Damn text limits. But this is a long story, and I promised to post it all. After doing some research and some quick site planning, I settled on an area I honestly didn't know very well, but looked promising. It has several abandoned silver mines, washes for shelter, and generally good wildlife to watch or take pot shots at. Of course, if anyone from PETA got wind of my ventures, they would have an absolute shitstorm over the number of jackrabbits and coyotes I've laid waste to. So, once settling on my location, I began to pack. This wasn't difficult, as I always keep my bug out bag ready in my closet, and decided it was a good time to cycle out old inventory. This time was a bit different though. I decided to bring a few more electronics with me than usual, including my ham radio, my night vision monocular, and a solar charger, just in case. I decided to leave my cell phone behind, and rely on good old fashioned map and compass for navigation. From an early age in Boy Scouts, I've known how to navigate the old fashioned way, and decided I'd give my rusty skills a bit of a test, and see how well I remembered the UTM coordinate system. The electronics were for some nighttime fun, and emergencies only. I woke up at 3.30am, day 2 of my vacation. I was excited as hell and ready to head out. I decided to load up on crap before hitting the highway, and stopped to get some coffee and donuts, looking like some ridiculous commando on a dirt bike. After getting my sweet black nectar and a load of simple carbs, I headed off. The weather was great, and the wind rushing over my face felt wonderful. As I got a few miles away from the turnoff, I remembered there was an Indian gas station fairly close to the exit as well. The Indian reservation boundaries are in odd shape, and for about a mile the highway went through the middle of it, offering anyone who stopped in some tax-free gasoline. I stopped in after topping off my tank, and the cashier asked where I was off to. I told her where I was going, and just planned on going camping. She mentioned the Air Force base a few miles away had been doing some testing, and warned me not to get lost on their target range. This is definitely something to take seriously, as they do drop live ordnance. I thanked her for the advice and headed out. It was early morning and I continued to enjoy the feeling of wind on my face and the liberating feeling of being able to break free from any social obligations. I reached the turnoff area where it was all dirt slash gravel from there on. I performed a quick test on my ham radio, set the repeater offset, and verified reception was clear. The dial tone registered and I got a familiar weather forecast for the day. I was ready to begin. I headed down the dirt trail and soldiered on through the bumps and washes. My bike frantically kicked up dust and rocks until I finally reached a couple of fork points in the trail. At this point, I couldn't quite remember which direction I was supposed to go as I had only been in the area once before with a friend and he drove. I looked at my map and got what I believed to be a good bearing and headed off down the trail. Now, when I say trail, these are more like gravel roads that sometimes end or bring you to a military base encampment or some other small encampments around the state or wildlife preserves, or even Bureau of Land Management land campsites. Accidentally venturing to a military one isn't a huge deal, they'll usually just turn you around or wave you off. So I wasn't too horribly concerned about a run-in with anything unless you're up near Groom Lake, but that's a different beast. After driving down this particular trail for a while, I realized I'm lost. None of the landscape looked familiar, and I had traveled a good 25 miles before reaching anything that looked like a decent campsite. I had packed plenty of water and food, so I wasn't concerned about finding a spring or anything edible. I had also remembered the way in which I came, so that really wasn't an issue either. At this point, I just decided it was adventure time, and drove on for a while, until I found a campsite I decided was suitable for a short stay. I ended up setting up at the base of a mountain, near a dried up wash. It was a pretty nice area and there were quite a few Joshua trees and trenches to set up in for some decent afternoon shade. 
It wasn't rainy season at this point, so the threat of a flash flood taking me out really wasn't a concern either. After getting set up, I threw on my camel back, grabbed my rifle, and filled my flask with a bit of vodka just for fun. I was my own man now, and had to answer to no one. I walked around for a bit, heard the familiar sounds of cicada, and headed towards another dry wash bed near the base of the mountain. After walking for a bit, I quickly became bored and took a swig of vodka. Sometimes it can take a bit just to detach from normal life and relax. I decided after my drink, it was time to start setting up targets and push my Yugo M76 to its limits. After setting up a few targets, I was good to go. I walked back to my campsite, identifying local plant life and inspecting oddly shaped rocks, not really in any hurry. I stirred up a jackrabbit on the way back, who was less than happy to see my presence in the valley. I shouldered my rifle to take a pot shot at it and then noticed something in the corner of my scope. I adjusted the zoom and got a closer look. It was a freshly killed coyote. I decided to let our little rabbit friend go and headed towards the coyote carcass. The closer I got, the more pungent the air became. The smell of rotting meat was heavy. When I got closer to it, two things struck me as slightly odd. Number one, the pelt was not completely removed, but what had been was fairly clean. There weren't any missing extremities. Coyotes are considered a nuisance, so you can shoot them freely, but usually grabbing the pelt or tail or paw is common. Number two, it didn't look like there had been any entry or exit wounds from a bullet. Being a bit confused, I just wrote it off as a sloppy hunter who had found a coyote dead of natural causes and was scamming some farmer offering bounties on hides. Sometimes cannibalism happens in coyote packs, but it's not very common. I made it back to camp, started myself a fire, and drank down a shot or two more of liquid courage, and settled on taking pot shots at the targets I set up. I tinkered around, adjusted my scope, and tried taking the longest shots I could. I made a few accurate shots out to 700 meters, and decided I had pushed my rifle as far as I could in my slightly buzzed state. Yes, I know, guns plus alcohol equals bad, but I wasn't exactly in a crowded area either, nor completely shit-faced. After letting the rifle cool down for a bit, and breaking open one of my MREs, I began cleaning it. After several failed attempts at keeping it 100% dust free, I gave up, just did a quick field cleaning. It may not have passed the white glove test, but it would damn sure work if I needed it. After a nice 5 star MRE meal, I decided to break out my ham radio, turned it on, seeing if there was any other hams in the area. I scanned the stations, and didn't really come across anything of interest except a few rangers reporting their status. I decided to do something that you're not really supposed to do, and started scanning the capped channels. For those of you that don't know, the military operates on Mars capped channels, which have a very high frequency, higher than VHF, so please forgive the reference. You can eavesdrop on them with the right radio modifications, as long as you don't broadcast, you should be fine. I started scanning these channels and came across a bit of chatter. They didn't seem to have much to say either, except area status reports. After a bit, I started getting bored listening to them report on 10-100s and turned off my radio. As dusk was turning into darkness, I sat for a while, just letting myself go into a trance staring at the fire. I decided another drink was in order, and began to hear a bit of crackling coming from my bag. I grabbed my bag, assuming some critter or helo monster had decided to make itself a new home, and instead, found my radio turned on slightly. I turned it up a bit, and realized the sounds that I were hearing were short bursts of what sounded like gunfire over the radio. Intrigued, I turned it up and listened into whatever testing slash war games were going on. As I listened into the action, I heard what could only be described as fingernails on a chalkboard, coupled with a blood-curdling scream and a bit of dying rabbit mixed in. As I reached for the knob to turn the volume down, I heard a pop, and then silence. My radio had gone out or blown a capacitor, and I was now without any form of communication. I sat there in silence for a moment, wondering if coming out here wasn't the best idea. After thinking about it for a moment and a bit of self-reassurance, I was just picking up chatter from a hundred miles away. I decided that I was just letting small stupid things like the coyote carcass and the radio chatter get to me. For all I knew, it was some war game being played and some new equipment being tested. I decided it was time to get some sleep and do a bit more exploring in the morning. I took one more swig and crawled back into my tent for a bit of sleep. As I awoke the next morning and crawled out of my tent, I felt like death. My back ached and I was incredibly groggy and slow moving. 
I restarted the fire, filled up my mess kit pot with water, and started boiling it while pulling out some instant coffee. I decided that today I was going to do a bit more of riding around and exploring. I looked at my radio, laying next to my tent, and thought, guess I'd better be careful. After a morning coffee and MRE eggs and bacon, I grabbed my rifle and headed out to see if I could see any signs of life or find any old abandoned equipment or buildings. I biked up a natural trail and came over a ridge to a large stretch of open valley and land. Off in the distance, I could see the beginning of a military base's fence. When I saw this, I felt an incredible sinking feeling in my chest. Whatever was going on last night may very well have been happening just a few miles off. I shook off the feeling and decided that I was just letting anxiety and my imagination get to me. I told myself again that it was only war games and that some noise was probably getting through the channels. I decided to just avoid the area and rode back towards the campsite over the lower mountain ridge. As I turned back, I noticed something off in the distance, on the side of the mountain face. It was what looked like an abandoned silver mine, or a natural cave of sorts. At this point my curiosity got the better of me and I shook off all fear that I may have once had. Now I could actually do a bit of exploration. I rode up to the side, dismounted, grabbed my night vision and rifle, and peeked in. I couldn't tell how deep it was, but it seemed more man-made than anything. The rocks look roughly carved, but I'm not a geologist either. I couldn't really smell or hear anything, so I decided to walk in a bit further. I put on my night vision and waited for my eyes to adjust from bright desert sun to darkness. After a second, my eyes adjusted, and I turned on my monocular. There wasn't much to be seen. I walked for a ways, but still no signs of anything that would excite anyone other than a geologist. I could see what looked like a turn a bit further back, and decided against going too far in since I wasn't experienced in splunking. Also, friendly PSA, stay out of mines and caves, kiddos, cause that kills way more people that are out exploring every year than most other things. If you don't have any way to detect like natural gas and stuff like that, uh, that's normally what ends up killing people that explore these things. So unless you have some kind of like oxygen monitor or something like that, you really shouldn't be going into caves. Like there's, there's nothing down there that's so cool it's worth dying for. That's when something hit me. There is a primal fear everyone has. People debate what it is or how we acquired it as a species, but it's there. It's a deep feeling of dread, like you're being watched or stalked by something horrific. Chills crawl up your body, and you feel that something isn't right. Well, I felt this, and immediately froze, rifle in hand, pointing down into the cave. I couldn't hear anything, nor could I see anything. I then, however, quickly realized what was wrong. The smell. It was the same pungent smell the coyote carcass was letting off. It seemed too rotten, too pungent, and too strong for just a coyote carcass. Even in the sun, it just seemed odd, and now I could smell it in the cave. This set off every alarm in my mind, and every ounce of fear in me told me to get the fuck out of there. I slowly backed out while shouldering my rifle pointing it towards the back of the cave. Every rock under my boot sounded 100 times louder, and every breath I took felt like it echoed through the entire cave. As I reached the entrance, I turned and bolted for my bike. I started up and rode back as quickly as possible. I was taking no chances now and decided it was probably best to leave. Dusk started setting in as I was riding back, and I was contemplating just moving to a new site or calling off the trip two days in. I still wasn't sure if any of this meant anything, or if I had just been overreacting, but I knew that some odd things had been happening. As I rode closer to my campsite, I noticed everything seemed off, as nothing was how I left it. I was feeling really uneasy now, but I wasn't about to leave my expensive equipment behind. As I got closer, I realized why everything seemed off. My campsite had been raided. My tent was torn, my mess kit was strewn about. The fire had been scattered, and my pack had been dumped out. I assessed the damage and realized something. Nothing was missing, just vandalized. Even my radio, solar charger, and extra ammo remained. Stuff I was sure would be missing. My decision was made. I was calling it quits. I started packing up my bag and whatever I could scavenge that hadn't been ripped up. This was about the time I noticed something else. There were no sounds at all. No cicada. No crickets, no birds, just complete and deafening silence. 
As I was packing, I quickly drained my flask to calm my nerves. Nothing at this point could have changed my mind about leaving. It was quickly becoming dark, and even without a night vision rifle, whatever was out there was obviously screwing with me now. It was obvious that this territory belonged to someone or something else, and my hunting trip turned tables on me. As it got darker, I decided to scan the area first, to make sure my surroundings were clear. As I looked around, I didn't see much other than the familiar desert landscape. As I began to scan the area near the peak of the mountain, I saw something move. It was just visible behind a rocky area. I tried to make out the shape, but it was distorted and hidden by some larger rocks. I stared in that direction for what seemed like hours. Then it stood up. To this day, I will never forget the sheer terror and fear I felt while looking at this thing. It's as though death and evil itself was staring right at me, and every part of my mind screamed, this cannot be real. This bipedal creature stood as though it was human, but the eyes were massive. Just massive, blank, dark spots in my night vision. No reflection or gleam came from them. I couldn't distinguish any real features other than what seemed like a scaly texture. It just stood and looked in my direction, as though it knew I was watching it. Then it did something that nearly made me piss myself. It smiled. It was not a normal smile. It was a terrible, jagged tooth Joker grin smile. I took the safety off my rifle and shined the IR laser at it. After a brief pause, I delivered a fatal 8mm round to its head. Or so I thought. The shriek that followed was deafening, blood curdling, and absolutely terrible to hear. It was a scream that went straight into your soul and shattered it to bits. The dying screams of someone getting their head sawn off with a rusty Taliban blade would have been comforting at this point. I watched this thing shake and shudder for a moment and quickly delivered another round in its direction. I think I hit center mass, but couldn't be sure. It ran at a pace I'm not even sure my bike could keep up with down the ridge. Not quite in my direction, but too close for comfort. I bolted down into the wash and kept my gun trained in its direction as best I could while running. I ducked into a small crevice and waited. I could hear grunts and screeches in the distance. At first they seemed to move closer, and then further away. It was difficult to tell where the noises were coming from, but in the pitch blackness, I sure as shit wasn't going anywhere with that thing around. I stayed up all night, crouched in a crevice in the side of the wash, just waiting, gun trained at the opening, and kept awake only by adrenaline. It was the most exhausting and terrifying night of my life. Dawn broke, and I hadn't heard any signs of the thing. It had been a few good hours since I took the first shot, but waited until daylight was strong to even think about moving from my spot. As the sun rose, the familiar sounds of wildlife returned. I felt safe enough to venture to my spot. Very carefully I crept out. Covered in dust and feeling incredibly drained, I emerged. I looked around to see if anything was around. There were no signs of whatever the hell was hunting me last night, so I decided to man up and head to my bike. I didn't even think to grab my equipment. I just slung my rifle on my shoulder and very reluctantly started the bike, fearing whatever came last night would hear me. After running it for about a minute and no signs of movement were seen, I decided to carefully start heading out. Before that though, I had a thought. I wondered what may have been left behind where I scored a hit on the thing. I decided to check it out, since everything seemed clear. I drove up the ridge in DEFCON 1, scanned the area just to make sure it wasn't watching or following me. I got up to the rocky area where I first saw it hiding at, and found a nice bit of blood splatter. I quickly grabbed a handful of earth and dried blood and then booked it the hell out of the area. As I was driving down the trail, I started feeling as though I was being watched again. I only drove faster and didn't look back. After I got home, out about $500 worth of gear, keeping only my rifle, a couple of magazines worth of ammo, and my night vision goggles, I decided to get to the bottom of this. I called up a friend of mine who works at a local university and told her the situation. I didn't exactly go into detail, but I explained that I had been hunting and shot something I really wasn't sure of that had attacked me. She had me bring her the blood-stained rocks, and I guess ran some DNA tests on them. She got back to me after about a month and basically told me, I don't know what the hell this DNA is, and explained to me it only partially matched a few animals. Here's where everything gets really weird. I got a call from 
Well, I don't really know who, to be honest. They referenced my camping trip and said it was best I just forget about it. I've also noticed a few people tailing me while I'm driving and leapfrogging me on a regular basis, trading off following shifts. That's it, really. I'm not sure where else to go from here. I'm sorry I can't bring much closure, but now you know as much as I do. Alright everyone, well, that wraps up this thread from me. Please keep the comments coming. I hope I'm improving, and I hope you're enjoying the content that I'm making. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas, and you stay safe during the insanity that is the modern-day world. And as always, Ave Nex Alea!